Hi guys, Numa there. Welcome back to Numa Sound for episode number 35. Today I'll be expanding the Rosengård district, and the main build will be this largely abandoned industrial waterfront area, which has been repurposed by citizens for nightlife as well as a street art gallery and atelier. The city also has one of their helicopter depots here. To know why this waterfront became like this, we gotta go a little into the history of the area. I mentioned in an earlier episode that the whole district used to be very rural with mostly farmlands, before all the housing projects got built and this was still a farming district. This waterfront held warehouses for the farming industry and it was also used to ship products around the city, both for local use or to be exported further. When the housing projects were built, the entire farming industry in the area was gone and the warehouses and cargo dock no longer had any use. The city had plans to redevelop the area, but this never happened. All they did was to house a helicopter depot for police, ambulance and fire here because of the now very cheap land. The rest of the dock was left to rot in abandonment, something the citizens of the fast growing district didn't like, especially with housing built right up close to it. In the late 70s is when something started to change in the area. A group of Norwegians that had moved away from their home country in protest of the ban on skateboarding settled down here. They were all avid graffiti artists as well as having an interest in skateboarding. This abandoned industrial dock became their playing ground where they set up skateboarding facilities and covered all the abandoned warehouses in graffiti. It was the start of the street art movement in Umeshaven, which would only grow in the years to come. They also started hosting parties inside the warehouses. In 1979, all of these parties were closed down by police and the entire dock was locked off. This led to a big protest. The city had failed to do something with the docks and now refused the citizens to use it as they had done for years already. In 1980, the group of Norwegians however managed to strike a deal with the government. They would rent two warehouses for the purpose of street art. One of them they would keep as is to use as an atelier, while the other warehouse would be mostly renovated into a big and modern gallery showcasing street art from both themselves and others. The group named themselves the Rosengård Street Art Collective and started off the revitalization of this dock area. The next years it got turned into a bustling nightlife area, some clubs hosting inside other ab abandoned warehouses, while others built entirely new buildings on the plots of uh, demolished warehouses. A strip club, a rock club, nightclubs for electronic music and a hip-hop club eventually came to life here, and still is here to this day. Before I build all of this, I want to talk about what I'm building before getting onto the dock area, and that is an elevated light rail. This is very inspired by the subway in Williamsburg in Brooklyn, New York, where you got the subway going directly above the street, moving very close to the buildings. I wanted something that's between a full metro and a bus to form a local line across the district, so elevated light rail was a perfect fit. The line was built in the early 80s when the district needed some better connections within it as buses couldn't handle the capacity, especially with the rising popularity of the waterfront. To do this I used the LRT networks from Clues, which actually has these great elevated station networks that are already detailed if you turn it on with adaptive networks. All I had to do was make some stairs up to the platform and hook it up with a path and add some time displays with IMT. I really love the look of it and it has kind of, it's kind of adding to the gritness in the district. For now I'll just have three stops, one in front of the main hub of the district of course that we built two episodes ago and I'll extend it in the future. Off camera I placed a tram depot just to get the line running but I'll give it a proper placement in the future where I know where it's going.
First off, I get in three different light life venues. We got a techno club that opened up in an abandoned warehouse, and next to them a strip club and rock bar, which were built from scratch in the 80s as the buildings that sat there had just fallen together completely. The rock bar is iconic as this was where the punk rock scene of Nomsaun started, and it had several international punk rock bands perform here in the 1980s, like the Ramones and Sex Pistols to mention a few. Around the back I place a lot of pallets and other props to make it look like the delivery spot at the back of a bar. And all around I rough up the area with a lot of trash, stains, cracks and the graffiti on empty walls as is common in this uh, district. To give a hint of the industrial past, I place two cranes at the edge of the dock and I convert them both into procedural objects and change the texture so they look like just the rest of the metal. I really like the vibe it gives it gives off. Thank you, Wimby, but I'm a ratty shabby manly until it's empty and pastor don't take dirty money. I like you filthy, she my Achilles, a mouth for millies, not just for memories. Been on a mission, did I mention it before? I can't be slipping till I'm reaping what I sow. Can you meet me where I'm at before I hit the top? How many years I put in this just trying to make it pop? I had a purpose for they had opinions, but what hurts? What started the whole waterfront district is the Rosengård Street Art Collective, and now I'm coming out to build their area. This abandoned warehouse covered in graffiti is what the group uses as an atelier, so they would work on the art pieces here before showcasing out on the gallery right next door. To mark the border of the area, I use this broken fence prop, which I use more later as well. I got this nice graffiti font for PO of the workshop, so I used that to write the initials of the group, RCAS, on a concrete block by the entrance. Going out to the gallery, this was probably the most fun and coolest part of the build. I imagine this warehouse was beyond repair, and they stripped most of it, only leaving the rusted framework of the warehouse. To give it a very open feel, they put in just a few concrete walls, while well, most of the walls and the entire roof is just glass. On the inside I use some concrete blocks to act as canvases for the street art, and use a bunch of super nice murals to work as the art being showcased. In the middle, there's a more open area, and inspired by gallery openings in real life, I put a cluster of small tables, which is where I imagine all the guests can grab some complimentary wine. And of course a DJ, a DJ to play some music for the opening. Probably some hip hop, this is a cool and hip gallery after all. To finish this, to finish it off, I put some skateboard stuff and benches on the backside. I imagine this would be where the artists hang out during daytime time, day ta- time between making art. It can also serve as a nice place to get some fresh air for the people visiting the gallery.
edge of the dock, I got two more graffiti covered warehouses, which is an electronic dance club and hip hop club. Before detail around them, I go back and finish some details around the rock bar and strip club. I got some beach scene props that I rotate around with PO, just look like, well, dancers chilling outside the club. And then some animated bike gang members, just having a chat with them. Maybe they own the club or something. Right as I was starting this build, Sven Berlin released his great punk citizens with prop versions leaning to the wall. So I just had to put a few of them around the rock bar. The name of the hip hop club is The Get Down, inspired by the Netflix show of the same name. So I just wrote, I just write this on some rusty metal with the graffiti font at the outside of this club. To finish uh, the dock after I put everything in, I just cover it uh, with a lot of overgrowth to kind of border it against uh, the road. And then I put along the broken fence prop that I used as well. And then I also put in a small parking lot and have a lot of cracks and destroyed roads just to finish off the gritty look of the dock area. I found this brutalist church on the workshop and just had to put this in the, this district because it really fit perfect with the architecture. Around the back and side of it I just put a small cemetery and it works great to break up the area between all the housing projects. I won't comment much on the building of the housing projects, it's much of the same designs I've done earlier, just trying to vary up and use the, all the different buildings I've downloaded and thinking about the heights of buildings with the tallest buildings right by the transit stops and then kind of tapering down away from them.
I've mentioned earlier that this district would have a lot of immigrants due to being built in the 1970s when there was a lot of immigration and it provided affordable housing for all these new citizens. This led to Rosengård having a growing Muslim com community, which is why I decided to give them a mosque in this spot right here. Around it I wanted to do a more modern outdoor market, just clustered around the open areas around the mosque. A lot of the props I use are the Osara market stalls, which works perfect for the style of a more modern outdoor market run by the Muslim community. Out of this episode, I also got the Muslim Sims from the workshop, which was least released not too long ago, just to have some of them walking around now that they're introduced in the lore of the city. I don't have any city services in this district yet, so I'll be making just a small area that is shared between a brutalist style hospital as well as a fire and police station which fits the style. At the back of it is just a small parking lot and some benches for the people working here to chill on their lunch break. So that is it for today's build. I hope you enjoyed it if you made it this far. Likes, comments and subscribes are always greatly appreciated. 
It will help me a lot in growing the channel. I do also have a Patreon now, in case you wish to support me further. Until next time, have a great rest of your day, and stay tuned for some cinematics. <laughs>